Good day, students. Um, on this group, we're going to be proving the sum of difference identities uh, for CAN. So let's go ahead and write down the uh, instructions for this example. So we're going to uh, prove prove that prove that uh, we're going to deal with the sum identities for tan first. Prove that tan x plus y equals tan x plus tan y divided by uh, 1 minus tan x tan y uh, using the sum identities sum identities for sine and cosine. Okay. All right. So this this um, proof basically of derivation is dependent on two already determined results. Okay. There is a clip I did about the derivation of the sum identities for sine. You can you can watch it on my on my website on mathmatchchef.com. We're just going to focus on tan x plus y, assuming that we already have these two derived. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and do the proof. I uh, want to show that this equals that. So we need to uh, connect it with these two identities. All right. All right. So we're going to start with tan x plus y equals what? Well, uh, we know from our quotient identities that uh, tan theta equals sine theta over cosine theta, okay? So in this case, x plus y is basically theta, okay? We're going to be substituting x plus y for theta, but so if we make that substitution, what do we have? We have sine of instead of theta, we're going to have sine of x plus y, okay? Uh, divided by cosine of x plus y instead of cosine theta, all right? Cosine of x plus y. All right, now we're going to uh, make use of the sum identities for sine and cosine. So for sine, the sum identities for sine is sine, sine x plus y equals sine x cosine y plus cosine x sine y. Okay? All right. And then for the sum identities for cosine is uh, cosine x cosine y minus sine x sine y, okay? So the goal is how do I make this become this equation right here, all right? That's a, that's a question that we, we have to ask ourselves. Well, what, in order to do uh, accomplish that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the sign. See how a plus here and a plus here and a minus here and a minus here? To the left of this minus, you have one. So that's our hint right here. The question is, how can I make this component right here one? The reason I'm picking on this term right here is because it is to the left of this minus, okay? So I wanna focus my uh, attention on this piece right here. How can I make it equal one? In order to make it equal one, I'll just need to divide, divide it by cosine x cosine y, right? So that will make this one, all right? So, uh, but we can just randomly divide anything at once by whatever we desire because we're going to change the equation. We have to do it legally, right? So, uh, what I'm going to do is since I want to divide this by one, which will make it similar to this piece, um, if I do the same thing to every single term, which will make the move big old, hopefully I'll get this equation, all right? So, I'm going to set this up in a way that uh, will make it easy for you to understand. So. I'm going to write this whole thing as, um, in the numerator, I'm going to write sine x cosine y divided by 1, that is this piece right here, plus, I'm going to write this piece right here as cosine x sine y divided by 1. Okay, you can divide anything by 1, it doesn't change the magnitude. Um, and then in the denominator, I'm going to have on the left side of the equal sign, I'm going to write my target expression, cosine x, cosine y, divided by 1. This is the one I want to change into 1, minus sine x, sine y, 
divided by one, the term to the left of the uh, minus sign. All right, so I want to make this divide. I want to divide it by one. So I mean, I want to make this one. So I have to divide by cosine x, cosine y. So dividing by cosine x, cosine y is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. All right, so I'm going to multiply the denominator by one over cosine x, cosine y. All right, then when I distribute, this will have cosine x, cosine y in the denominator and it will divide out to 1, which is what I wanted, okay? All right, but whatever you do in the denominator, you have to do exactly the same thing in the numerator. All right, so multiply by 1 over cosine x, cosine y, okay? Now, I'm going to distribute this to all four terms, to the left side and right side of the signs. So here, I'm going to have sine x, cosine y, divided by, this comes downstairs here, cosine x, cosine y, okay, plus, and then I distribute it to this, I'll have sine x, sine y, divided by, distribute this to the bottom, cosine x, cosine y, okay, that's what you get when you distribute this to the numerator, okay, all right, now, uh, let's shift our attention to the denominator, I'm going to do the same distribution, uh, remember, when you multiply fractions, you just multiply across, okay? So when I distribute uh, this to the denominator, when I distribute to the first term, to the left of the minus, I'm going to have cosine x, cosine y, divided by cosine x, cosine y, minus, and then distribute this to this term right here, I'll have sine x, sine y, divided by cosine x, cosine y. Okay? All right, so let's see what this uh, whole expression reduces to. This whole, this divides out to 1, cosine goes to 1, and this goes to 1. That is exactly what we wanted, so this whole term here is 1. Okay? But what does the introduction of this cosine x, cosine y as a denominator to everything, what does it do? Well, let's look at the upper left. This is sine of a cosine, which is 10, and this divides out to 1. So this divides out to 1. I'm not going to do that yet. I'll just look at it like this. Uh, divides out to 1. Uh, over here, um, we have... We have... Oh, okay, wait a minute. Oh, we have cosine x sine y. So this is supposed to be cosine x. I cannot write it incorrectly. So this is supposed to be cosine x. Because if you look on the top right here, we have cosine x sine y. So this is supposed to be cosine x sine y. Okay, so that's, I just copied it incorrectly. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, so if you notice over here, these two divide out to 1. Okay, this one divides out completely. And then uh, in this situation here, we don't have any uh, divisions taking place. So let's see what we have. This becomes sine x over cosine x plus sine y over cosine x divided by this whole thing becomes 1 minus and I can split this out this becomes sine x over cosine x times sine y over cosine y okay we already established earlier that tan theta is equal to sine theta over cosine theta that's the uh, quotient identity right so we're going to use that substitution to finish up the proof. So if we make the substitution there, sine x over cosine x is 10x plus, uh, this is supposed to be a y, sine y over cosine y is 10y, all right? And then divided by, we'll have 1 minus sine over cosine is 10x, again, but then sine y over cosine y is 10y. And guess what? This is the sum identities for tan, okay? So this is uh, what, what we want to, wanted to derive. All right, so what if you had the difference identity? What would that look like? Well, if we had a difference identity, it's exactly the same procedure, only that the signs get inverted, okay? So if it were a minus right here, if we had a minus here, guess what? This would become sine x minus y, and this would become cosine x minus y. 
And this formula will change into sine x minus sine x cosine y minus cosine x cosine y. And then this will be instead of minus, it becomes plus. Okay? So that will change this sine to a minus, change this sine to a plus. Okay? Coming down, this sine will become a minus, this sine will become a plus, this sine will become a minus, this sine will become a plus. Okay? So the formula is going to be minus down here and then a plus down here. Okay? So um, this is basically the formula for tan of x plus y and the sign on the bottom x minus y also. So this is the sum and difference identity. If you're doing the sum, you use the black signs, the ones on top. If you're doing the difference, you use the red signs, the one on the bottom, and there you have it. Okay, so sum or difference is exactly the same proof as long as you're deriving it using uh, the sum of difference identities for sine and cosine. Okay, so there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this uh, clip. Uh, please feel free to subscribe to my channel by clicking up here. Uh, if you like this video, you can click like down here. More clips can be found on mattershev.com. And please post a comment to tell me what you think. Thanks again and have a great day.